Hello and welcome to America. Well, American art song at least. Our focus today takes us to the first great songster of the new nation, Stephen Foster, or Stephen Collins Foster as the Kimball states. Time is short and there's a lot to do, so let's get into the bulk of the content about Stephen Foster and his parlor songs. Stephen Collins Foster was born in Lawrenceville, Pennsylvania on July 4th, 1826 to a prominent Pittsburgh family. His father was a member of the Pennsylvania State Legislature and the mayor of Allegheny City. Stephen Foster was the youngest of 11 children. In 1840, Foster attended the Allegheny Academy, the first of three failed attempts to get a degree. The other two institutions can be found in the songhall.org reading. At 14, Foster wrote his first song called the Tioga Waltz. However, it wouldn't be published until after his death. In 1841, Foster enrolled in Jefferson College in Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania, but he was overcome with homesickness and moved back to Pittsburgh to live with family from 1841 until 1844 while studying privately. In 1843, his first song was published, titled Open Thy Lattice Love, and in 1845, the songs Louisiana Bell, Old Uncle Ned, and Oh Susanna were first introduced in a family concert at the Foster residence. This seems like as good a time as any to discuss the complicated history associated with Stephen Foster. As he did write beautiful songs and was the first to contribute in America to the art song body of work, he is necessary to include. However, Stephen Foster also wrote a bevy of problematic songs, known collectively as minstrel songs. These minstrel songs were often performed in vaudeville theaters and were as popular as they were offensive. Old Uncle Ned and Oh Susanna are two of the more prominent songs that focus on stereotypical speech patterns and creating a caricature of black Americans at the time. Minstrel songs are also responsible in large part to the institutionalization of racism in the form of blackface, in which performers such as Thomas Dartmouth Rice would cover their face in court grease and perform exaggerated characters meant to demean and chastise black people. This also led to the still somewhat prominent stereotypes that black people are seen as dangerous or as lazy, which of course is not the case. Okay, it was important to provide this context, but let's continue now discussing the life of Stephen Foster. By 1846, Foster had moved to Cincinnati, Ohio to work as a bookkeeper for the Irwin and Foster Steamboat Agency, of which his brother Dunning was a partner. Foster soon abandoned the pursuit of business and began writing songs inspired by the Irish, English, and Scottish aristocracy, the industrial working class, and plantation slaves and river life that surrounded him. In 1848, he sold O Susanna and Old Uncle Ned to W.C. Peters and negotiated a contract a year later with the publishers Firth and Pond Co. He moved back to Pittsburgh in 1850 and wrote a total of over 160 songs in the next six years. During this time, Foster also began writing alongside E.P. Christie, the leader of the Christie Minstrels. An arrangement was made for them to be the first to sing his songs, and as the Christie Minstrels would debut the works, the sheet music credit would read, as sung by the Christie Minstrels on the cover. This partnership was wildly successful and profitable for several years for both groups. In 1850, Foster married Jane McDowell, and they had one daughter, Mary. Their relationship was tumultuous at best, marked with several separations and reconciliations. During one of those separations, Foster wrote the popular song, Jeannie with the Light Brown Hair, which was inspired by his wife and led to a reconciliation of the couple. He is known to have been one of the most commercially successful composers in history, though his vices, namely alcohol, accrued some large debts later in his life. During this period, Foster also produced less music, which further strained the marriage and his relationships with his publishers. The oncoming civil war led to a rise in patriotic and military marches gaining popularity. Foster wrote songs during this time about homesickness, love, and heroic soldiers, but couldn't come close to the success that he had had just a decade earlier. In 1861, following a move to New York City, Foster was forced to sell his songs for cash in hand to stay afloat. In 1864, Foster died in New York as an alcoholic, penniless debtor 
but gave us the song Beautiful Dreamer just two weeks before his death. At a glance, Foster wrote a large body of work and was lauded for his simple yet beautiful melodies. Our two listening exam materials are Ah May the Red Rose Live Alway and Genie with the Light Brown Hair. The former is one of his early songs, written while he was courting Jane McDowell. Its lyrics reveal his love and uneasiness about the outcome of the relationship. It is in a strophic form in 6-8 time. Genie with the Light Brown Hair is one of several songs referred to as his Jenny songs that were written during their separations. He wrote this song while at his peak in popularity, earning around $500 quarterly in royalties. Doesn't sound like a lot, but this was the 1850s, just for reference. And that's everything for Stephen Foster. Stay tuned for our discussion of Samuel Barber coming soon. I'm interested to see what your thoughts are about Stephen Foster's place in music history and art song courses given his contributions to the minstrel song genre. Be sure to include this as one of the characteristics in your style sheet on Foster Do Wednesday. I'll see you soon for more discussion on Samuel Barber.